I can tell you this is Mizuno's best ever driver. The performance is incredible and I will share with you data that is arguably the best I have ever produced with any driver. And in my opinion, it's all down to one huge addition to the Mizuno ST Max driver. And behind me is a set of numbers that suggest this driver is very, very good. That one shot there is optimal in every parameter. Is the ST Max the perfect driver from Mizuno or was that just a one-off? But what does in fact the ultimate driver look like? Well, that depends on what you're trying to achieve. But from a brand's perspective right now, the concentration has been on one thing this year without doubt, and that is forgiveness. But forgiveness without the detriment to other parameters. So what they don't want to see is a high spinning ball. They don't want to see a low launching ball. And obviously they don't want to see a fall off in ball speed. So that's something they've had to really work on to combine all the technologies and producing something a little bit different this year. I think Mizuno have gone down that exact same route. Have they achieved it? Well, there's a suggestion with this driver. They might have produced certainly their best driver to date by far, certainly for the masses. And this ST Max product is a really interesting one. The huge addition I referred to in the intro is the largest back weight that I have ever seen in any driver. It is in fact 54 grams, which by comparison to others is mahusive. The QI10 Max has 30 grams and the Ping G430 10K has 28 grams. This huge weight plus a new expanded Cortex chamber combined to create Mizuno's most stable driver ever. And I have to say it's a tech story which seems to be working wonders. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Hot Golf, the online golf retailer for all major brands. And if you want new golf gear, then please support us by supporting them. So in today's video, I'm going to try and answer the questions that I'm asking myself at least, and hopefully they're the same ones that you're asking yourself. And that is, first of all, just how far can I hit this damn thing? Because ultimately with driver in hand, that's all we sometimes really care about. But we also know there is a big but. I don't wanna see if I can just produce that number once, I wanna see if I can produce it time and time again. I also wanna see where these balls are going on the fairway. So Trackman will be on. This will be a very much data-led experiment. We'll be aiming at the fairway. And what you're seeing right now is me play a number of shots that I've got one thing in mind, and that's to try and hit the fairway. Now, as you will see, I do that on some occasions and on others, I don't. That's pretty much uh, standard for me and my swing. They're the kind of issues that I am faced with. And that's about my swing capabilities rather than the driver head. But what I will say is this, I'm more than happy with where those balls have finished. And as we start to progress through the shots, I've also sort of up the ante if you like in terms of my club head speed and effort and you'll start to see that we get to the sort of 95 96 mile an hour club head speed and then we start to see what does this driver actually do with me at full tilt well what it does is something very well indeed and efficiency you'll see a lot of 1.48 1.49 which suggests data at least wise this is performing very well indeed but ball speed ratio to club head speed is exceptionally good that carry distance is as good as i've got but also big thing to note is just where that spin number is maintaining and also just see how high the ball is launching at the same time so what mizuno are saying they are set out to do they actually seem to be doing that's an interesting thing marketing that actually sends us in the right direction we test it and it bears out it's often very easy with these videos to waffle on a bit but what i'm trying to do is cut out the crap basically and just get to the facts and the facts are this driver performs really really well in every parameter and it did it consistently which is all i set out to achieve in today's video indoor here at hollywell golf club let's start off with what that dispersion actually looked like and um, for some people, they might suggest that there's an issue. I don't hit the center line with my driver every time I hit it. And apart from the one extreme left and the one extreme right, I'd be more than happy to suggest we're finding a fairway. But overall, let's get back to the data itself. Um, we've got 11 shots that were sort of analyzed and there's quite, um, let's go to the average first of all, 93.8 club head speed, a 138, uh, or 139 almost ball speed 
Peak height really interesting at 90 feet, launching at 15.4, a 2.30 carry and a 2.472 spin. Those numbers are as good as anything I've collected. It's simple as that, it really is. You know, that, that's performed incredibly well. I just want to then go to those sort of, uh, what are these shots? Eight, nine, ten. Well, the latter shots really, where we crept up to the sort of 95, 97, 95.6 mile an hour club head speed. And what you start to see is the launch angle being maintained, the spin number being maintained, and we've got a ball there carrying. Well, we've got a 237, we've got a 240, we've got a 238 carry. That's phenomenal performance. And trust me, we've done a lot of testing. A lot of you watch the videos on a regular basis. You'll also understand that my sort of ballpark is around that sort of 235 all out, carry distance that is. We're topping 240, almost 241 there, but that's not the big deal. The big deal is it's 241 with a spin of 2567 and a launch at 13.2. That's what makes it so interesting. So not only is that ball going to land, I mean, what's a suggested carry, and this is a suggested carry by the maths that Trackman works out, is we've got a 265-yard drive in there. So the spin, everything combined, is working incredibly well. Seriously, I'm blown away by just how good that is, was. Um, I also just want to touch on very quickly, I've not mentioned in this video how this thing looks. It's the best looking driver in my opinion that has been produced so far from Mizuno. Uh, I love what they've done. I love this, just this huge weight at the back end with this little matte finish. Crown looks really good. The overall profile at address, I can't speak highly of just how good this driver is. Um, blown away, numbers, track man, everything suggests a real good driver. I will be definitely putting this in a final head-to-head -to, -head to see which is the best driver so far of 2024. But right now, it's probably that.